Hi everyone, Mrs B here. And today we are going to continue with learning our IUPAC nomenclature. Today we are going to be focusing on the aldehydes and the ketones. So let's get that whiteboard on and start naming. Aldehydes and ketones are dealt with together because they both contain the carbonyl group. The carbonyl group is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen. Now the difference between aldehydes and ketones is that in aldehydes, this carbonyl group occurs on the end of the chain. So aldehydes have it on the end of the chain. And ketones have it in the middle. Technically, the IUPAC name for the aldehydes and the ketones is the alkanals and the alkanones because this actually mirrors the way we name them. So the functional group is the carbonyl group. In aldehydes, we call it the terminal carbonyl group because it's on the end of the chain. And in ketones, we call it the non-terminal carbonyl group. So you can sometimes see the formula written out. but other times you actually just see it written as RCHO or R -co R1 co R2. So the aldehydes are the chos and the ketones are the cos. Now the rules for naming them, the aldehydes and the ketones, the carbonyl group is a pretty high priority group. So it takes precedence over other groups in the um, naming when you're numbering the chain. So the ending L is for aldehydes. So L is for aldehydes and own is for ketones. And the carbon atom that is in the carbonyl group itself is called the carbonyl carbon. And when you identify the longest continuous carbon chain, it has to contain the carbonyl carbon. So you actually have to have it containing the carbonyl carbon. You don't want the carbonyl carbon off to the side. The chain is always numbered so that the carbonyl carbon has the lowest number. And of course, that means for aldehydes, because it's on the end, aldehydes will always have number one because they're a terminal group, high priority terminal group, and they'll always have number one. The carbonyl carbon has to have a number in ketones to tell you which carbon it is on the carbon chain. All right, the best way to learn how to name aldehydes and ketones is to just get on and name aldehydes and ketones. So let's do some examples. So our first example here. First of all, identify is that an aldehyde or is it a ketone? So if we find our carbonyl group, we'll see that that is on the end of the chain. So that is an aldehyde or an alkanal. Now we want the longest continuous carbon chain that contains that group. So let's circle it. Okay, in my very unimaginative way, I've made that go straight across the page. Now we number that chain so that the aldehyde gets the number one. So the carbonyl is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. Okay, so we can see that we're, we have four carbons, so it's butte. We have a chloro group at the number three position. So we've got a chloro. So this is three chloro. Butan L. We don't need to say butan one L. Aldehydes are always number one, so it's not necessary. Okay, let's have a look at one with a skeletal formula this time. First of all, is it an aldehyde or is it a ketone? Let's find where the carbonyl group is. And we see that that is on the end of a chain. So this is an aldehyde. 
Which aldehyde is it? Circle the longest carbon chain. Be careful not to include the hydrogen as a carbon. All right, numbering it. This is number one, number two, number three, number four. So this is, sim there's nothing else attached. So this is simply butanol. Okay, moving on. Is this a now next one an aldehyde or a ketone? Let's find the carbonyl group. Here it is. Is it on the end or is it in the middle? It's in the middle. So this is a ketone. So the carbonyl is in the middle of the chain. So that's a ketone. Which one is it? Let's look at the longest carbon chain that we can find that contains that carbonyl. There it is, number it. Now we need to number it from the end that gives the carbonyl carbon the lowest number, which means in this case, we're gonna number back from the right. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a heptanone and it is heptan three own because the carbonyl is on the third carbon. So it's heptan three own. Okay, the next one, I want you to pause the video. I want you to have a go and we'll come back with the answer. Okay, aldehyde or ketone? Carbonyl is on the end. So that is an aldehyde. Longest carbon chain. Remember not to accidentally include the hydrogen there. Numbering, it's an aldehyde, has to be number one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentanal and it has a chloro group on number two. So it's two chloro pentanal. All right, your turn again. Pause the video and try the next one. Okay, aldehyde or ketone. Here's the carbonyl group. That is in the middle of a chain this time, so this is a ketone. Number that, find that longest carbon chain. Now we could go one, two, three, four. Or we could go one, two, three, four. Which way do you go? The good news is it doesn't matter. So if you've got two different ways to get that longest chain, it doesn't actually matter. So let's just leave it where we are. What do we have attached? This is a methyl. So this is a methyl butanone and it's me, it's 3-methylbutan-2-own. All right, what do you do if you've got two of these groups in the same molecule? So here we have a group that has a molecule that has two carbonyl groups. So both of them, however, on, are on the ends of the chain. So this is an aldehyde. Which aldehyde is it? Let's number. It doesn't matter which end we go through. Four, five. So it's pentan diol. Now, we don't need to say pentan 15 diol because it couldn't be a diol unless both of them were on the ends of the chain. And therefore, if it's pentan diol, we know that the aldehyde groups, the carbonyl groups must be at positions one and five on the two ends of the chain. 
Not the same for ketones. Ketones, you're going to need to use numbering. Let's have a look at the next example. So this one is a dione. You can see that we have both of those carbonyl groups are in the middle of the carbon chain. So this is a dione. Let's find the longest continuous carbon chain that includes those. And we're going to number that from the end that gives those carbonyl groups the lowest number. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a hex and dione, but you need to give the number for where the two um, carbonyl groups are. So this is hex and two, three dione. All right, what about cyclic? You can't really have a cyclic aldehyde because the cyclic um, nature of the molecule means that it has to be in the middle. So this one here, here's the carbonyl group. It's in the middle of the, well, ring, I should say. And how many carbons are in the ring? One, two, three, four, five. So this is cyclopentanone. If you have substitutions on the ring, and then, then you simply number them in the way that going around the ring, you'll get the lowest numbers for the substituents. The carbonyl must take precedence and must have number one though. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, giving us numbers two and five. If we went the other way, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, which would give us higher numbers. So we're going to stick with this. So this is a cyclohexanone. It has a bromo group attached at number two and a methyl attached at number five. We're gonna list those attached groups in alphabetical order. So this one will be 2-bromo, 5-methyl, cyclohexanone. Okay, that's enough examples for today. If you enjoyed this video, and if you feel that little bit more confident now about naming aldehydes and ketones, then please consider giving the video a like. And also for more explanations of awesome chemistry, please subscribe to my channel. I am gonna see you guys in the next video.